and welcome to your Monday One Show live on BBC One and iPlayer with Jermaine Genius. And Alex Jones coming up tonight. We're celebrating 60 years of Doctor Who and who better to join us than a doctor who's carried the sonic screwdriver not once but twice, David Tennant. And joining him is the man in charge, Russell T Davis. They'll be telling us why they've returned to the TARDIS for three special anniversary sh shows, 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 which start <laughs> this Saturday. Uh, and it's that time of the year again. But first, it is time to say a very happy 60th birthday to Doctor Who. And who better to celebrate with than the man who kick-started the reboot and the first Doctor to do the double shift. Please welcome Russell T Davis and David Tennant. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank Good you. evening. Good evening. Uh, David, I'll start with you because uh, yeah. well, the last, your last words before you were regenerated back in 2010 were, I don't want to go. How prescient that turned out to well, be. <laughs> here you both are. Yeah. Um, so who decided to come back first out of the two of you? That's tricky, isn't it? It was kind of a so, yeah. group thing almost. We did, we did the online things in the pandemic where everyone went online and fans all got together and yes. talked about Doctor Who. Yeah. That made Catherine Tate say to you, well, oh. do you fancy coming back? Wouldn't it be fun if we got the band back together Gosh, for one yeah. last go? She had that conversation with you. To me. And then I literally thought it was my job to pass that on to the BBC. I thought, well, I've got to report this. <laughs> don't get two big stars <laughs> like this saying they want to do Doctor Who and I can't yeah. not tell them. Why would uh, But we all kind of thought it would disappear, but yes. here we are. Yeah. Yeah, so we had, you did. So we had a bit of a taste, didn't we, on Friday night because you did the sketches. That's on right, and yes. Um, but what can you tell us about these three special episodes? I never really like to give much away, Alex, do we? Come on, you're amongst friends. <laughs> we can say the facts. Three okay. Saturdays. Go on, facts. Three Saturdays in a row. Yes. Yes. Doctor yes. Who lives on a Saturday, I think, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Lives definitely. on a Saturday yeah. night. And it's not a three-part story. You can watch each one yes. separately. Okay. Yes. And they're all different. One's like a big family film. One's very scary. One's insane. Yes, they're very oh. different. Each one is really quite unique. The first one is a sort of recognised... Uh, the sort of world of Doctor Who that you'll recognise, yes. I think. OK. Yeah. The second one is unlike any episode of Doctor oh. Who. Oh, that looks scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the third oh, one is... <laughs> Bananas. That's Bananas. a roller coaster. Yeah. Shall we have a little look? Come Go on, on then. Come on. Sometimes I think there's something missing. Like I had something lovely. And it's gone. Now I've got this friend called Donna Noble. If she remembers me, she will die. <laughs> We've got a Martian in the shed! Something entered this world. Who are they? Monsters. I don't believe in destiny, but if destiny exists, it is heading for Donna Noble. Uh, David, so explain to us how the Tenth Doctor can come back as the Fourteenth. Well, if doctor. only the Doctor understood that. Okay. Uh, but it just it has happened. He, ha it, the, the Doctor has regenerated, and yeah. uh, we and should come up with a reason, really, shouldn't uh, we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An old face has has come back. Well, we, why, why would that he, be? He looks confused. Yeah, yeah, he, he is confused. You know? Look, there He's he is like, confused. I've been in this skin before. Yeah. Yeah, so well, it's uh, that's that's sort of part of the story, uh, it, uh, you know. A kind of yeah. why am I here again? Yeah. Okay. And then of course he do he bumps into Donna Noble again, Catherine Tate. Um, before before mm. I want to ask you a question about that actually. But before we do, will people notice any differences before you know with, with your last two doctors? I mean, there wouldn't be any point in me coming back to then play it completely differently. <laughs> I don't think. No. That'd be a no. little yeah. bit disappointing. We like familiarity. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But it, but it is. It, I mean, in terms of. This is the 14th Doctor, so I have been okay. Jodie Whittaker and Peter Capaldi and Matt Smith in between. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I have that, I carry that experience okay, with me. Fair enough. Mm. And on Donna, what I was going to say is, obviously she plays your sidekick, Donna yeah. Noble. Catherine Tate plays your sidekick, sorry, Donna Noble. Um, you wiped her memory 13 I years know. ago. Uh, I know, I so, know. And if I mean, she remembers anything about the Doctor, <laughs> her brain will melt and she will die. We're in oh, trouble. Why? Mm. So that's quite, a, that's quite a tricky place to start. Wow, mm. right. Yeah. Well, um, Russell, your inspiration was Star Beast. This is a comic, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Many years ago, in 1979, there was a Doctor Who comic strip, which is fantastic, written by oh, Pat yeah. Mills, drawn by Dave Gibbons, who were titans of the comics yeah. industry, about a little alien, the sweet little meep, falling to Earth, being lost, wanting to get back home, and oh, and, and making friends with uh, school children. I mean, you'd think that was stolen off ET. That was printed two years before no. ET. Yeah, yeah, it actually precedes yeah. it. It's a great really? story. So when I came back, I just thought, 
why not adapt a really brilliant story? Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading it. I remember getting Do Doctor Who Weekly as a kid. So when I opened the script, I said, so adapt like, oh, oh, I remember it. that. <laughs> yeah. But was it quite Brilliant. difficult to bring sort of a comic to life on screen? Because it looks quite comic-y, doesn't it? You know, the effects yes, are I quite... Yes, I mean, it's part of the fun of it. Yeah. And uh, the Meep is a great creature, so innocent, so yeah. sweet and so lovely. So you cute. Just wanted to, you wanted to be safe. Everybody will want to... one for Christmas. Absolutely. Yes. Where are the toys? Where are the plushies? Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> but no, no, it's it's my job to, to make those things work. And you tie that in with the story of Donna, yeah. who need who starts seeing aliens and remembering it, what's going on. Yeah. So you get that to dovetail, and it's quite a mix. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the Meep is played, the voice of the Meep is uh, oh, Miriam Margulies. Wait, yes. I mean, who doesn't love Miriam? Who does? <laughs> Love and when you look at Meep quite closely, you think, oh, Meep looks there, like there Miriam. There she is. <laughs> yeah. You do do that. You've, we filmed Miriam when she's doing the voice, so they map some of that onto the CG well, face. Well, it's working yeah. very well. Mm -hmm. And then you've brought oh. back, like, an evil character from the 1960s, yeah, the toy yes, maker, the played toy by maker. Neil Patrick Harris. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, why did you want to bring this particular character back? He's a great big cosmic... In the third episode, he comes back in the third episode, the stakes are raised. I mean, it might be obvious that actually David's Doctor is not around forever and there was a new one waiting uh, in the world. What? Wings. I don't oh, know, what? sorry. <laughs> Call my agent. Sacked live on air. <laughs> what can I say? But um, so there's, there is... Things are going to get climactic, they're going to get dangerous, they're going to get astonishing. So and you need a big as villain as you possibly get. And Neil Patrick Harris is just is the man. I mean, oh my what God. a bit of casting that was. Absolutely. We were all very chuffed when he turned He's terrifying. Yeah. He's wild. Yeah. He's oh. wild, isn't he? Russell Can't David, wait. thank you both. Honestly, it's been absolute fact. People are excited about this, aren't they? Uh, really oh, excited. Beyond. Good. Well, the uh, 60th anniversary special starts uh, this Saturday, 6.30 on BBC One and iPlayer. And, of course, the Hooniverse, which I feel weird when I say this, mm. but it is. The Hooniverse, the Hooniverse has launched on iPlayer with over 800 episodes, as well as some of your favourite Doctor Who spin-off shows. Uh, now, one of the reasons Doctor Who is so loved is the fact it's a good family fun, uh, albeit with some scary monsters. So we're about to meet three generations of the same family who share their love of everyone's favourite Time Lord. For 60 years, 14 Doctors and over 800 episodes, Doctor Who has been a familiar sight and sound in our living rooms. Oh, black and white and beautiful. Can you flashbacks? <laughs> <laughs> In Gloucestershire, the Farmer family are settling in for a trip down memory lane. Grandad Simon can remember the first ever episode starring William Hartnell as the Doctor. He will have our lives in his hands, that is enough. Then we agree. And the arrival of the Doctor's greatest enemy. You can't imagine how scary this was when it first came out. <laughs> If you think of Doctor Who, you think of the Doctors, their sidekick, and the Daleks. They are to be exterminated. I could actually imitate that voice then. I can't do it now, but I'll try. Exterminate. For Dad Ali, the adventure started in the 1970s. We're in colour now, and this is John Pertwee. Some kind of... Guy. He was kind of mad scientist. Good heavens, what on earth do you take me for? That, that guy is Sontaran. And the first time he takes his helmet off, and he's, it just looks like a, a pudding. <laughs> In 1974, Tom Baker took over as the Doctor. Doctor, I see. Yes. What have you found? With a new robotic companion, K9. Doctor. Negative, 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 no entry, no oh, entry. Oh, K9. <laughs> Some people liked him, some people hated him. They hated the fact that occasionally this, this dog would just trundle up, shoot people, or unlock the door and just solve the problem. As well as the Daleks, the Doctor, here played by Peter Davidson... Soon be there! ..had another returning enemy, the Cybermen. Oh, I remember them well now. The Cybermen became much scarier. We can now time travel. But there's one particular episode that still gives 20-year-old Sam sleepless nights. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. You are squirming, aren't you? The Weeping Angels are considered one of Doctor Who's most frightening monsters. Oh, uh, no. See, this is... Oh. No! <laughs> if you take your eyes off them, they can catch you. I had to sleep on your floor the first night I watched this, do you remember? Yeah. Because it was right before bed, it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> Ten-year-old Naomi is the newest fan in the family. David Tennant is my first favourite Doctor. It's been really cool seeing all of the Doctors from black and white to this. This is Jodie coming to the end of her time as the Doctor. Who's the new Doctor? And Naomi hasn't seen the latest twist in the Doctor Who tale. 
Enseuna. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I know these teeth. I just like David Tennant. He's nice. I'd rate him as my second, maybe third favourite doctor. Really? That's a bit awkward. <laughs> I like Naomi. Well, She's great. Say, Naomi, Naomi is Yeah, I'm not sure about that. She is great. Number one from second or third. Adam Bennett, clearly. Yeah. Oh, second or third favourite dad. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Oh, OK. Never We've got to thank mind. the Farmer family, though, for that. Brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, last week, we asked you to get in touch with your Doctor Who stories, and oh, you yeah. didn't disappoint. They didn't, did they? Wait for it. Judy has been in touch. Judy worked in the BBC's costume department in the 1960s oh. and was very excited to work on Doctor Who. She even ended up, this is it, briefly dating a Dalek. Oh. An American wow. student who was making some extra cash. <laughs> oh. Is it John Scott Martin? It could have been. Could have been. Could have been. Oh. Michelle, uh, Michelle's daughter, Laura, uh, starred in a couple of episodes as the young, uh, youngest Blitz kid, actually, and there she is. Oh. oh. Billy Piper as well. Billy Piper. Oh, that great story. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. I, do you know what? I loved Billy Piper as well. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, of course. Of course. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, didn't Doctor Who inspire your love of acting? David. Well, it, it's probably one of the reasons I went into it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was it was the show that when I was when I was young, when I was little, it, that absolutely captured my imagination. Yeah. I thought it was amazing, and I remember watching John Pertwee turn into Tom Baker and asking my parents, "What? Who? What is this magic?" <laughs> and look and at us now. That started it. Yeah. But as you're also in Macbeth, very different. Yes. At the Donmar Warehouse. Yes, rehearsing then, at the moment. Well, it's a bit of a different production, isn't it? Just tell us the sort of experience that the audience might find themselves having. We're using binaural sound. What does that mean? It basically means that as an audience member, you'll have headphones on. So you'll be oh. watching us live, but all sorts of things. You'll be seeing the live, you'll be having live experience. You'll also be having an experience within your head. Mm. I'm oh. so glad you asked that story. But Do you have to pay extra for the headphones? <laughs> no, you don't. Fine, I'll come. That's all and, they'll, and, and they'll be, they'll be sterilised every night, just in case you're worried. Fine. <laughs> that was such a Welsh question. Good. <laughs> you have to pay extra. <laughs> headphones? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, sorry, people, I really am. Uh,